When you're working on an electrical circuit in your home, you don't want the surprise of a live wire because somebody turned the breaker back on at the panel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid this potentially dangerous situation. It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY, and you follow the best practice of turning the breaker off before working on any circuit in your home. The problem is, is that somebody might accidentally turn that breaker back on. They don't know why it's off and, and they're trying to be helpful. Now you might touch a live wire. You don't want that to happen. Electricians that work in commercial and industrial settings prevent this from happening by using circuit breaker lockout devices like this one from Master Lock. They often also tag it with a lock so that people cannot turn the breaker back on. Now, while you could buy these devices for use in your home, let me show you a way you can prevent somebody from turning a breaker back on simply by using some bare wire and some WAGO connectors. Now, if you haven't used WAGO connectors before, they're a great replacement for wire nuts. And I'll put a link in the description below to a starter pack that contains all four of the most common type of WAGO connectors. The most common situation is when you need to lock out a single breaker because you're working on an outlet or a switch on that circuit. There are a couple of options here and the one you choose may depend on whether your breaker panel is a vertical or horizontally mounted panel. These two options use the fact that a breaker switch has a hole that runs from one side to the other. This allows you to slide a wire through it. I usually use the bare copper ground wire from a, a typical cable like a 14.2, 14.3, or 12.2 Romex cable. Option one uses a two inch section of bare wire. You take your two inch piece of bare wire and you bend it into a U shape and so the two ends are about the same distance from the end of the loop there. Now with the breaker switch in the off position you slide one of the ends through that hole that's in the breaker switch and it hangs on there. Now we can take a two slot WAGO connector and slide it onto the two ends. You might have to bend the ends together if they're too far apart and lock it in making sure it's locked. Now that breaker switch can't be moved over because the connector is blocking it on the adjacent breaker. If your breaker panel is horizontally mounted, this loop option may not stay beside the breaker switch. It may slide down because of gravity. And so this might not give you the protection that you need. Option two works equally well with a vertically or horizontally mounted breaker panel. Again, we start with a bare copper wire that's about two inches long. This time we're going to keep our two inch piece of wire straight and I'm going to connect one end of it to one slot in a two slot WAGO connector, lock that in, connecting it to the slot that's going to be closest to where our switches are. Now I can slide that through the hole in the switch. I can take another two slot WAGO connector and connect it onto the bottom locking that on as well. And now I've tested both and now again it can't be turned on because the connectors are blocking it with the adjacent breakers. Now if your breaker panel is in a horizontal orientation, mine's vertical, so if it's horizontal I've sort of simulated it with some breakers just connected here clamped together. This is the breaker that's off. So what I can do is I can take my WAGO connected to that straight piece of wire. I can slide it through the hole in the switch and then take my other connector, slide it onto the end of the wire, clamp it down, make sure it's solid on both sides, it is. Now this breaker can't move because again, the connectors are blocking it against the adjacent breakers. In both options, the lock prevents moving breakers that are adjacent to the one that you've locked out. Now, while that's not ideal, it really isn't going to be much of an issue in most of the DIY electrical projects we take on at home. 
Now, if you need to lock out multiple breakers that are adjacent to each other, just use a slightly longer piece of wire and use option two to lock out both breakers at the same time. Always make sure that the wire is not too long. You want those Wago connectors tight to the breaker switch so somebody can't push that wire in a way that allows the switch to turn on. So always make sure that the wire is the correct length and those Wago connectors are tight to the breaker switch that you have turned off. For double pole breakers, you can't use the same technique because the bar that connects the two breaker switches is not hollow, so you can't slide a wire through it. Instead, we need to use two wires. Now these wires are a little longer. The first one we start with is about three and a quarter to three and a half inches long. With the double pull breaker like this one here that's turned off, you can't slide the wire through because this post that's connecting the two breaker switches is not hollow. So we take a slightly longer wire and we bend it into this sort of a shape. And it's bent that way, but it's also bent a little this way. It's not perfectly straight because what we need to do is we need to take this and we need to slide it through that underneath that bar and we need to then hook it on and move it around because you don't want to turn off the adjacent breaker. Now that we have that in place, we can take our two slot Wago connector and connect it to the top there, to the wire at the top, lock that down, and then we're going to take a straight piece of wire, slightly shorter, and connect that. Oh, we didn't get that connected properly. Got to get that properly connected. See how it's tough to get it connected. Then we connect this one, and now we can connect the two at the bottom with another two-slot Wago connector. So when I slide that on, lock those in place, they're all locked. Now this double pull can't move because again I'm blocking it with the connectors on the adjacent breakers. Now you have a lock for a double pull breaker and this works equally well in either vertically or horizontally mounted panels. If you have unused breakers in your panel because either past work or a future circuit that you're planning to put in, it's a good idea to keep them locked off using these techniques so that they don't accidentally get turned on and become live in your breaker panel. If you want to go that next step, you can attach a card that indicates to people that the breaker is off for your safety. This is what professional electricians do in commercial and industrial settings. Now obviously the options I've shown you are not as secure as the professional devices that electricians use. They also don't allow you to move the breakers that are adjacent to the one you've locked out because they're blocked by the connectors. They don't allow an actual lock to be locked to it in order to lock it out like the professional electricians do with their devices. But for most DIYers like you and I, it gives us that additional level of protection to make sure that that breaker won't be turned on while we're working on a project and end up accidentally touching a live wire. It's especially important if you're working on a project that's gonna take a little longer and you might need that circuit to be turned off for a few days or maybe even a few weeks. If this information has been helpful, please click the like button and leave a comment down below. If you have other DIY questions, leave those in the comments below so I can consider them for future videos. If you enjoyed the information in this video, here are some other videos I think you'll find helpful. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I publish new videos. Thanks for watching.